Last time on The Good and the Bad of Black Grad. My contribution to it was my research uh, to society sort of come by way of making, uh, filling in knowledge gaps and, and trying to build technology to improve healthcare. So I answer the types of questions like, why does this therapy work for one patient but not the other patient? Or why does this therapy like radiation lead to long-term cognitive impairments in certain patients? And I'm using imaging data to um, answer those questions. And, and just last week, um, I, I sent imaging data to one of the surgeons and said, can you just let me know uh, how this works out for your case tomorrow? So that's the kind of like working environment. And there's really that nice translational component and it really feels like you're making a, a contribution. So that's what I really love about what I do. I think that because of what I'm able to learn, being in a PhD program means that you do a lot of reading, you do a lot of critical thinking, especially in philosophy. I have a lot of knowledge about racism and and just, you know, conceptions of race and where it comes from and, and incarceration. I just have a lot of things that I've learned over the years. And I think that that knowledge is really important, especially in a time like this, where we need that type of information. Um, and also philosophers are great critical thinkers, right? I, I don't consider myself to always think with the crowd. I ask questions that sometimes are uncomfortable, but that's part of how I've been trained to think. Uh, as a philosopher or as a philosophy major. So yes, I think critical thinking and just having a broad range of knowledge on really important topics, I think that's that's what I contribute. Um, so yes. So oftentimes I think um, doctors or like primary healthcare providers are responding to like immediate needs. But I think my role as a sociologist is to look more at the upstream factors and really interrogate how those upstream factors are shaping people's health and then provide solutions um, and um, solutions and ways that we can address those upstream factors. And that really starts by looking at these larger systems of inequality, like racism and sexism and patriarchy and how those things are, are influencing people's lives. So I think that the work um, that sociologists do and certainly my work, I think is contributing to helping society, especially society be better through understanding things that impact people's health better. And then also I was thinking about the ways um, in which uh, positivism, so this idea that we should be like objective, neutral observers in our research really underpins um, sociology and perhaps a lot of other disciplines, but certainly in sociology. And so this idea that we should be detached from our work and like isolated from our work, but we know that uh, we were talking about this before that as blind people, many of us bring our, our real lives and our, and our experiences into our work. So we can't be detached from our work. And so this push, I think, this like really dominant push to be detached from your work, I think might also be isolating and you have to kind of fight even harder to justify why I know centering myself in my work is important, bringing my lived experiences in my work is important because otherwise the discipline really pushes you to be like a really disembodied scholar and see this, this research that you're doing as separate from your everyday life. But we know that all of these things are, are connected. Uh, my mom is white and my dad is black. He's from Jamaica. Um, so I, I grew up around white and black people mm -hmm. and have a lot of friends that are white. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say that I feel isolated or uncomfortable around white people, if I'm going to be completely honest, um, mm -hmm. just because they're part of my community growing up. Um, but there were moments, um, I think in graduate school and, uh, even in my postdoc where I kind of noticed my blackness a little more. Um, I feel like people in the black community, unfortunately also, um, often tend to come from educationally or economically disadvantaged backgrounds. And that was very true to my upbringing. Going to graduate school, I noticed that sort of, I felt a little bit more disconnected from some of my friends who were able to uh, study and then go home and, and do homework. Whereas um, I would wake up and go to school and then I would um, go tutor and then I would go to Kelsey's diner and I would serve tables until 11 p.m. And I did that, you know, every week. Uh, just to get through graduate school and to keep up with everyone. So I think there are a lot of times where I felt very frustrated um, just because of that background. Uh, the way that I've approached grad school is that I do have to have a, a connection to the community where, where I'm at. So that's meant that in Halifax, I've gotten involved in different um, projects just because I'm passionate about it, but I, it also brings me closer to Black people, <laughs> which yes. I want to have community. Sure. So that means that I've been doing a lot of things outside of my program that has slowed down my progress, and that's not what's required. What's required in academia is to pass your exams, 
pass your courses, defend your proposal, publish, and teach a couple courses. That's what my program requires. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing all this extra stuff because I want to, and, and it fuels me, and mm -hmm. that's slowing me down, right? Um, and I think that does have to do with my identity as a Black woman, but again, that's just my personal experience, so. We, we also have a, a more formal training um, that is actually required of all faculty uh, at the institution to talk about inclusion um, and, and re more resource sharing and things like that for their for their students. Um, uh, and so I think those are those are kind of more policy related things that we've um, uh, included. And uh, and I'm actually on planning uh, our radiology retreat right now, and we're talking about having a diversity and inclusion session um, that involves both both black um, and white plan panelists um, having mm -hmm. discussions from both perspectives about what they think the issues of diversity and inclusion are in the department and how we can address them. So I think also having discussions that are not just inclu including only um, certain groups of individuals, but everyone to get other people, everyone's perspectives on how we can move forward. Um, and be more inclusive of everyone. Our research, our research is important and it's undervalued. So we need to be getting more scholarships. We need to be getting more uh, better funding packages. At UBC, there is no scholarships for or funding or extra funding for black graduate students who are mm -hmm. in, in the school. And I think that like we know that black people are, you know, the ways that race and class intersect mm -hmm. and are inextricably linked under a system of racial capitalism means that a lot of black people are coming from working class backgrounds. So how are you going to better support black students when they come mm -hmm. into your program? Give them more money. Sure. Um, but in terms of other policy or, or things that institutions can do to be more um, supportive of black students, I think that people in leadership positions, um, whether that's like higher administrative leadership positions or just faculty members, they need to understand that like their positions their decisions are not neutral like they need to understand that they are they're the way that they see the world the decisions that they make um reflect how like reflect their experiences of and course. Their experiences are informed by systems of racism sexism like unless you're really critically interrogating how you're not reproducing it you're reproducing it right sure. so the norm the status quo is to reproduce it so i think that People need to be a lot more reflexive of how their decisions are actively keeping some people out of the institution and um, and making the institution a hostile and uncomfortable environment for people, specifically specifically gra black graduate students. Um, so yeah, traditional areas like metaphysics, epistemology, to really take seriously thinkers of color, contemporary work. So I would say if you are an instructor, take a look at your syllabus and see if you can update yourself on what other types of people are writing about your field, even if it's critical work, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's a critical look at all of the things in your canon sure. that have been worshipped. That would be sure. amazing. And then second at the level of the instructor, teacher support for your students of color or for your Black students. So if you see that a Black student is struggling, um, maybe reach out and ask why. And that could be something that actually saves them from failing a course or dropping out or flunking out because they may not feel comfortable coming to you because you all look different. There's all this stuff about racism. So you as an individual can actively help at the level of what you do as a teacher and a professor to help to retain students um, and make it so that they want to come to become undergrad students and then eventually get to the point of being a professor, right? It, you have to you have to keep students throughout the process. Yeah, and if students are dropping out, they're not going to become academics.